So we want to find the area that is bounded by the following two curves. Now, I think the hardest part here, or one of the harder parts, is to come up with a figure. If you're allowed to use a graphing calculator, go ahead and graph them. Uh, assuming that you're not, you'd have to make a table of values. And for instance, for, for something like this one here, I would actually fill out the y's instead of the x's. And for the y's, I'd use numbers that I know that I can cube root, for instance. Negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. If I plug negative eight in for y here, the cube root of negative eight is negative two. Square it is four. So that is the associated uh, x value. Plug a negative one for y, cube root it, negative one, square root one, that is the input for that output. Plug in zero, it's zero. Plug in one, one. Plug in eight, and you should get back four. And you know, you could extend this table if you'd like. And similarly for this one here, I would follow a similar approach. I would pick numbers for y that, uh, that I'd raise to the power of four. So try to keep them small, because otherwise it would blow up rather quickly. Maybe like negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Plug these in for y, and this is what you'll get for the x column. So this is what I got here. And if you were to graph all this data on the same Cartesian grid, the following is what you would see. They would look something like this, where the green function is this one here, and the orange function is this one there. And they have the following points of intersection, namely 1, 1 and 1, negative 1, which you can see there and there. This is necessary. We need to know the points of intersection so that we can find the area bounded between them, which is this purple region there. And so now we know our limits of integration, negative 1 to 1, because we're going from the lower to the higher, and this will be in terms of dy. So we can go the right function minus the left function, where the rightmost function is the green one, this one here. So we have two minus y to the fourth minus, so it's always gonna be the one on the right minus the one on the left, whenever your integration is in terms of dy. And let's see, so now it's the orange one, which is y to the power of two thirds bracket this, bracket that, and now we can, sim well, we can distribute the negative so that we have 2 minus y to the fourth minus y to the two thirds, close that dy, and now we can integrate term by term so that we have 2y minus a fifth of y to the fifth, and then minus, let's see, if you add 1 to this, that's going to be uh, 5 thirds, uh, so 3 fifths, And all of this is to be evaluated from negative one to one. So if I plug in one here, here, and here, I would get two minus one fifth minus three fifths. Put that in parentheses, take away. And now input negative one and there, there, and there. And that would be negative two. And that would be positive one over five, there and there and then plug that in here, that would be positive three over five. And let's see, so this equals, 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 and so this equals. So we have two minus a fifth, minus three fifths, plus two minus a fifth, minus three fifths. Does anything eliminate? Darn it, nothing goes away. It's all right. So add the twos and then combine the fifths Actually, uh, let's see, so they all have a common denominator. That's four and four, that's eight, so minus eight fifths. So we have 20 fifths, which is four, minus eight fifths, and that of course becomes 12 over five. And so the area between these curves, that bounded region, has an area of 12 fifths square units.